Let's talk about something very exciting and that's of course going to be animations. Animations are a great way to make your site a bit more exciting, a bit more lively and of course with CSS Hero we can do that. So let's take a look at the current website and it's okay but it's also a bit boring, right? Nothing really happens. So how can we make this a bit more exciting? I'm going to target the logos in the clients section. Let's make them animated. Maybe we can make them appear slowly from the left, maybe make them fade up from the right, things like that. So how exactly do we do this? Now, obviously we're trying to target six logos in this section, right? And this brings me to a very, very important point because on your website, it might be a different setup. Basically, whenever you're trying to target multiple elements and you have to choose one of those to represent all of them, you want to go with the element that has the class that is shared by all the other elements. Notice that if I clicked on Wild Rock and I opened up the code editor, notice that code the I'm sorry, the Wild Rock image has this unique number. 6A5329. If I chose Setter Homes, notice that number has changed. So if I chose Setter Homes to represent all the other logos, that will be a bad choice because Setter Homes has a unique class attached to it, which is the one that has this number. Now, in such a scenario, look for the element that has the class shared by all the other elements. In this case right now, Uber Bank has that class because if I clicked on Uber Bank, notice there is no number attached to Uber Bank. But a, an even better way of determining whether or not this particular element has the same class as other elements is when we hover in it, do you see that number six right there? That tells you that this particular class belonging to this Uber Bank is shared by six elements. Wild Rock will show you just one, <laughs> telling you that Wild Rock is the only logo or image that has that class. Same with Setter Homes. Photo Fit has six as well. So basically, if we were going to choose one of these logos or images, Uber Bank or Photo Fit would be the ideal choice. So I just wanted to point this out because it's very, very important because if you choose the wrong element, and you apply the animation to it, expecting all the other elements to also share the same animation, you might be disappointed because you chose the wrong element to represent all the elements. So be careful whenever you're choosing your representative element. So I'm going to go with Uber Bank and let's apply some animation. I'm going to head over here and right here you'll, you'll see animations. And right here we have the on reveal effect, basically what kind of animation do we want? And oh boy, CSS Hero has a lot, has a lot of them. And one of my favorites is actually the slide right. So I'm going to choose slide right. You will see exactly what it does. Easing basically refers to the timing. Should the timing be smooth from start to finish? Maybe you want it to start slowly and then end quickly. That's exactly what that does. I'm going to go with linear. So basically a smooth timing from start to finish. Offset, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But a delay, would you like to add a delay? Uh, yes, okay, let's add a delay of 1000, which is basically one second. And now the duration. How long should the animation last from start to finish? I'm going to go, let me minimize the code editor. I'm going to go with 4000, so four seconds and then once here means that once the animation has run for the first time, would you like it to run again or that would be that? In this case right now, I'm going to say false. Let the animation run as many times as it is triggered. So let's do this. I'm going to go and scroll all the way up and let's see the animation in effect. So I'm going to scroll back down. I'm scrolling down. And now you can see the way the logos slide in from the left to the right. And there you go. Looks already a lot better than what it did initially. So that is that. All right. Now I'm going to make a few changes. I'm going to remove the delay. Okay. And let's also shorten the duration to 2000. All right. 
So let me scroll all the way back up. Let's scroll down. And now you can see a lot more of a smoother effect are being applied to the images. Now, what about the offset? What exactly does it do? Now, the animations typically kick in once the viewport for that particular element has been reached. In other words, the animations are triggered once it is time for the browser to reveal the contents of that particular element. So with the view, with the offset rather, what we can do is that we can control this. We can control how much further down or how much further up the user will have to scroll before the animation actually kicks in. Right now as it is, it's around this point where the animation begins to kick in, right? As you can see. However, if we change this to let's say negative 300 and I scroll all the way up. Now notice I'm going to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Okay, now we've gotten to the client section and now notice that the logos have already appeared. That's because we're using a negative value for the offset, meaning that the animation is triggered before we even get to the default view port. Now look at the opposite. I'm going to change this to now let's say 300 instead. Okay, I'm going to scroll all the way to the top and now I'm going to start scrolling down. Scrolling all the way down, 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 down. And now notice that the logos have not yet appeared. Let's scroll down a bit further. Notice that we have to scroll a bit further down than normal because we've changed the offset to 300. Now you can even see we be we're beginning to see the text right there. California, London, New York. We keep scrolling down even more. The images have still not yet appeared. It's until we now get to this point, that's when the images now begin to appear. So that's basically what the offset does. So you can control basically how much further down the user has to scroll before the animation for that particular element or elements uh, kicks in. So that's basically it for animations. Feel free to check out the other numerous animations that you have. There's some really, really cool ones in here like the uh, flip up, you've got the zoom in, zoom down, try playing around with the duration as well, the delay, you can change the offset, and just don't go gung-ho and start up, uh, applying animations to all your elements. That will make your website look more like a, like a circus show as opposed to a website. So that's it for CSS Hero animations, and I hope you'll enjoy using them on your website.